Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Charlie sent me notes that Steve check out the story out of Arizona involving the medical bills. 12news.com, KPNX. Arizona woman facing $14,000 in bills after medical flight she did not need, but that's misleading. The medical flight was $50,000, but apparently some of it got paid by insurance. So the woman's in a playroom filled with toys for a one-year-old boy going on two years old. And she watches her son play and says, he surprised us. She said her son is the first boy in a long line of girl cousins and her first baby, uh, Earthside. We had a bumpy road leading up to him, given we had a miscarriage before. Earlier this year, she's pregnant again. We've been trying for, I want to say, seven months. But the unexpected this time was the bills she's now getting in the mail. She says, we have these mounds of bills that we're looking at and no baby. Back in March of this year, she started feeling pains. She went to the local hospital and her OBGYN. Her doctor was the one to confirm that she was likely having a miscarriage. But the pains continued. She said she woke up around 1 a.m. one morning in pain, different than what she'd felt before. I told my husband, something's wrong. This is not like the last miscarriage. She went back to the same hospital where they did another ultrasound. The next thing I know, the doctor's coming in and telling me it's an ectopic pregnancy and you need to have surgery. She was then airlifted via helicopter to another regional medical center. There, she says, the ER doctor comes in and says, why are you here? Why were you helicoptered? Like the doctor doesn't even understand this. She said the doctor told her all she needed was a shot that her OBGYN could give her. Said she went home after the hospital did some blood work and she got the shot from her doctor. Then she got bills totaling $74,000. After insurance, she still owes at least $14,840. An associate director of the Brookings Schaefer Initiative for Health Policy says, Healthcare prices in our system are standout among other industrialized nations. You know, both particularly hospital prices are kind of the biggest driver of our high healthcare spending in this country. Now that was Lauren Adler speaking, and she reviewed the bills in this case. She said in this specific case where the patient didn't have, you know, maybe that advice on what was actually needed, And sort of leads again to one of these things where the system can be unfair to many people. Well, unfair is one word. The woman uses another. She said it's corrupt. It's corrupt. That's the best way to say it. Now, the regional medical center told 12 News in an email that they are required by law to accept suspected ectopic pregnancy transfers. The air ambulance company that took the woman from the one hospital to the other refused to discuss the $50,000 bill. But the woman says this needs to be known that this is not okay. You can't charge these outrageous fees. Uh, One of the hospitals did not respond to 12 News multiple and repeated attempts to contact them regarding this experience. And now the woman's expecting more bills. The impacts go beyond her bank account. She says, we're still trying to grow our family. But now with all these bills, I just don't see how that's possible anymore. So in essence, she's at one hospital. Hospital goes, you've got an issue. You need to get over to this other hospital right away. They helicopter her there. The other hospital doctor goes, what are you doing here? Why why would you be helicoptered here? And sends her home. And when the dust settles, she starts getting bills that add up to quite a bit. And a big chunk of that is a $50,000 helicopter bill. Now, I have a friend who has a member of a family who occasionally has been helicoptered from place to place. And he's told me what the initial bills have been. And then after his insurance company gets done with them, what the insurance company actually pays. And the strange part is they bill this much, but they'll accept this much. And this is not the scale. I'm merely making a point here. And so the question is, Obviously, if you need a helicopter, it's an emergency. It's got to be done right now. That's going to cost more than if I simply booked a helicopter flight next week in advance under calm conditions. I understand that. But the question is, who sets these prices? And better, 
If you were to ask, what's this going to cost me? Do you have the right to ask, should they tell you? Uh, and if they told you, and they said it's me $50,000, you say, well, wait a second. Couldn't we just, I don't know, take an ambulance? How far, how far are these two hospitals apart? I don't know. So there are a bunch of questions that come up, but here's the thing. We've talked before about how there's now federal statutes that say hospitals must disclose what the costs are for a lot of what they do. And if you don't post that stuff, you'll get fined. And some hospitals say, yeah, we'll just rather pay the fines than post the stuff because they, they like it that way. And I did a video a while back about a woman who went into an emergency room, sat around for, I think, seven hours. And then she finally realized that she's never getting any help and got up and walked out. And they sent her a bill for her time in the emergency room. And I did a video about that. And I actually got an email yesterday from somebody who says, Steve, I work in the medical industry. You got that story all wrong. What you described did happen. That is that somebody did come in, sit down, sat there for a bunch of hours, got up and walked out. But the bill was appropriate. The bill was appropriate. And she said, because the entire time that you're sitting there and you think nothing's happening, she goes, there's things happening behind the scenes. And there's a board back there with names on it. And they look at the board to see who should be next. And so they're prioritizing things. And we call that triage. Now, I've seen MASH. I know what triage is. Okay. But the point is, she goes, we call that triage. And she goes, so the entire time that you're sitting there and you think nothing's happening, we're doing triage. That's us back there making decisions, thinking, considering, strategizing. And so just the fact that you keep getting bumped down, you don't realize the process that's going into that. And that's what you get charged for. At least that's what this one person told me. And now, I didn't respond to that because I, it didn't really call for a response. She didn't say, would you please respond, tell me your thoughts. But, I mean, you could make the same argument and say, well, you're also sitting in a chair out there. Shouldn't you have to pay for that chair? The lights were on. Shouldn't you have to pay for your portion of the electricity? There's a roof over your head. You're protected from the elements. Shouldn't you pay for part of the roof and the walls and the floor you're walking on? Did you park your car in the parking lot? Got to pay for that. Uh, we could take this out to levels of the absurd until you realize that this is just the cost of doing business. When you have a business, there are things you're going to have to do to run your business. So I have a law practice, okay? I've got phones. I've got computers. I've got filing cabinets. I, I still use paper. I've got a printer. Um, I've got the internet. Okay. I have to keep the lights on. Okay. So when you come into my office and you hire me and I do work for you, I send you a bill for my time. I don't send you a bill for paper, copier, the chair you sat on, the roof over your head, the walls that held the roof up. That's the cost of doing business. So you're telling me that you think it's fair to charge somebody, I believe it was $100 an hour, for the triage that was taking place behind the scenes that did not benefit this person at all. And that's the biggest problem that I have as a consumer protection attorney. I'm an attorney who specializes in consumer protection. I specialize even narrower than that with respect to cars, simply because I can, but I'm aware of and I study what happens in the field with consumers. And by that, I mean the idea that you go out as a person and you pay money for goods and services. And so what a hospital is doing is generally it's services. I, I know there's some goods involved, aspirin at 15 bucks a pill if they're on sale, tongue depressors, you know, tongue depressors for 20 bucks a piece, um, and so on. But the point is that the bulk of it is services, right? Doctor comes in, examines you, renders an opinion, prescribes something, orders more tests, that kind of thing. But it's primarily services with a small amount of goods, okay? So if I come into a hospital, emergency room, speak to a nurse, and I go and sit down for seven hours and get up and I walk out, what did I get? And if you're going to say I got the benefit of the service taking place behind the scenes where people are looking at a chalkboard or a whiteboard and determining that other people should go ahead of me. <laughs> I 
I don't think anybody's going to buy that. I'm sorry. That is the weakest argument I've ever heard. It's the weakest argument I've ever heard. So I can tell you that my friend who has the relative who needs medical services and has been helicoptered, I believe, three times. He says, I got this gigantic bill. I looked at it, called my insurance company, and the insurance company negotiates it down. They wind up paying a fraction of that. So you might say, Steve, why do you think they do that? Do I need to explain that to you? They do it because they can and they hope someone's going to pay it. And if it doesn't get paid, they'll negotiate it down. But in the meantime, some people will pay it. And, and some insurance might pay the whole thing. Who knows? But it looks like the insurance company paid a bunch of it here because it looks like the entire bill for everything that she was involved in here was in the $70,000 range. Let me see if I can find it very quickly here. Yeah, so the entire bill that she was on the hook for at one point in time, along with her insurance company, was $74,257. After the insurance, she still owes $14,840. But the bulk of that seventy-four dollars appears to have been $50,000 for the helicopter flight, which the doctor said, why did you do that? That wasn't necessary. And that's the other thing I think that would bother a lot of people is that if you go into any other place and they go, this is not necessary, you go, oh, then I don't want it. But no one ever tells you that when you're at the hospital. They just say, oh, we're going to do this. Are you supposed to say, excuse me, is that necessary? People assume that a medical professional telling them they need something is telling them that because they need something. So there's the problem. So I understand that the medical field is different than the typical consumer setting in a lot of ways, but I do believe that consumers have the right to be upset when they get billed for things that they didn't get at all, or they get overcharged for things that they may have needed, but the prices are crazy, or they got billed for something that's totally unnecessary, even according to a medical professional. There you go. So Charlie, thanks for sending it. KPNX12news.com ran that. Uh, Arizona woman facing $14,000 in bills after a medical flight she didn't need and the insurance company has paid for the bulk of it, but she's still left with $14,000 she owes. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Do not argue with the inevitable.